the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show upon further review. And upon further review means a deeper look into the San Francisco 49ers loss to the Baltimore Ravens. Not always the funnest thing to get into is losses. Uh, losses, sometimes film is tough to watch. You're looking back at it and saying, hey, where did I go wrong? What do I got to do to recover? And you know, just how do we play better? And I think you can learn a lot from a loss. You can learn a lot from wins as well. But uh, whenever you click on that loss film, you have a bad taste in your mouth. And Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers definitely have a bad taste in their mouth from the Baltimore Ravens game. And it's taking nothing away from the Baltimore Ravens. They played really, really good in this game. They had a very superb game plan. They executed at a high level. They made Brock Purdy go through each and every one of his reads. A lot of times took away reads one and two, made him go through his progression. And Brock's capable, and he did a lot of times go through his progression and still find the player was looking for. But that sort of thing gives opportunities to the defensive line to get home. Now, when going through this film, I just broke down each play, looked and evaluated players. And what I found is for the most part, the 49ers in the first half were executing pretty well on offense and defense with some minor mistakes. And whenever you have mistakes like that, they can be compounded when they turn into big, sudden changes for the opposing team. Every single week, we talk about the same things. You need to be really good as far as turnovers and turnover margin. You need to be good on third down, and you need to make sure you convert all the time. And when it came to the 49ers, they just turned over the ball way too much in this matchup. Now, let's eliminate the last interception by Sam Darnold. And not really think about that one because it was in the end of the game. Yeah, it would have been nice. It could have cut it to a one-score game and all of that. But let's think about the other mistakes that happened in this game. Uh, Brock Purdy, you know, turned the ball over four times. How many of those were his fault uh, is irrelevant. How many of them, you know, ended up becoming sudden changes for the Ravens? Well, all of them. And they put the 49ers defense in some very precarious situations. And ultimately, the defense did the best they could to hold up. But at some point, the dam just breaks. And then next thing you know, you look up and you're down 30 to 12. That's the sort of thing that happens when you make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, it can be compounded by more mistakes. And so the 49ers suffered that. So we're going to go through this. We're going to go into exactly you know what I saw on film, what the 49ers need to fix, and kind of give a better understanding of maybe what you're hearing. Because a lot of times there needs to be context to the stats that you're seeing. A lot of people right now are very down on the 49ers offensive line. I want to get into whether that's warranted or not. A lot of people are you know, are down on Brock Purdy, of course, after having four interceptions. And a lot of people are saying this team is no longer a championship caliber team. I'm here to explain to you why that is completely erroneous. Uh, but I want to get into the other things as well, because there are some things to take away that the 49ers need to get better at. And, of course, there's some things that sometimes you just tip your cap and you say, hey, good job to the opposing team we'll catch you down the line and you hope you can. So we'll get all into that on this episode, like, and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already on the push for 5k getting real close to that number. So thank you so much. If you're listening on audio platform, 40 yards cut back on believe, please give it a five star rating. And if you're going to bet, bet with bet online, the only people that don't get time off this time of year are pro athletes and us at bet online with the NFL bowl season and NBA in full swing over the holidays. Bet Online isn't taking a second off to make sure you have all the up to the second odds, news, and info. Bet Online has all the sports wagering info available you need with both desktop and mobile access. Head there today to get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. And so let's get into this for, upon further review. So you can learn a lot when you get into the film. Uh, you can learn schematic things that maybe a team did to you to take you off your game. You can find technique flaws that maybe your players did. 
Uh, you could just find mistakes. And it's easy to highlight mistakes because mistakes often are the things you can notice the most. And I think that's why when I started watching the film, it was kind of in a cause and effect. And one of the things that gets talked about a lot, especially in sports, is how one mistake can lead to another mistake. And that mistake can lead to another mistake. And the harder that you push to get away from those mistakes or harder you push to make a play to overcome those mistakes, you slowly start to slip more and more into making more. And that's what happened to the 49ers. You know, they, we've heard the term that it becomes quicksand. And what happened in that game was the 49ers slowly, the ball rolled downhill and it rolled right over the top of them because one mistake led to another and another mistake. And it starts with a interception inside the red zone, which Brock Purdy doesn't do very often, but he misses the read a little bit. He misses Kyle Hamilton, who's got a deep half and he doesn't have a vertical route on that side to hold Hamilton in place. George Kittle's running an underneath route, so Hamilton's free to read Brock Purdy and come across. And normally, Brock Purdy would have thrown that ball a lot quicker, a lot more uh, with anticipation, but Debo Samuel's not read one and two in that progression. So when he releases the football, he doesn't see Kyle Hamilton, and he kind of leads Debo Samuel right into him. If you'd released the ball a second earlier, it probably would have been a touchdown in between the two safeties. That's the kind of game you're talking about. A second determines whether it's a touchdown and you're up seven to zero, or it's an interception and they've got momentum. That's the kind of thing that determines. Now, give the defense credit. The San Francisco 49ers defense gets a huge stop. They get a safety. How big was that? And let's give credit to Javon Hargrave, who I have to say, coming back from the injury, you don't know what you're going to get from a player that's dealing with a hamstring. I will tell you this. Javon Hargrave was an absolute menace in this game. He was getting after Lamar Jackson. He was taking on double teams. He was stopping the run. He was shedding blockers. He was running with Lamar Jackson to the sideline, batting balls down. This was a big-time performance from Javon Hargrave. That's exactly what you need. And the truth is, this 49ers defense came out with a very good plan. Steve Wilkes did a good job of keeping Lamar Jackson off balance early. They stopped the run, which was a huge problem against the Arizona Cardinals. And really, they played tight, sticky coverage. They were doing everything they needed to do in the first few drives of this football game. The problem was the offense wasn't holding up their end. And a lot of times, if an offense sputters, the defense will give you the opportunity to kind of get on a roll. Well, the 49ers offense didn't get on a roll because they had turnovers. And it wasn't like they, were, they weren't making plays or moving the football. They were. The 49ers offense moved the ball pretty well against this Baltimore Ravens defense. The problem was turnovers. And that is huge. Anytime you turn over the football, especially in your own territory, and create short fields, how long can you expect this defense to hold up? The defense did a really good job of holding up early. And then penalty struck. Deshaun Gibson made a huge critical uh, penalty where he went after Isaiah Likely on a ball that was going to go over Likely's head. And he made early contact and got a penalty. That was huge pivotal in that game. That was a third down. 49ers would have gotten off the field. Instead, it extended the drive for the Baltimore Ravens. And they end up running the ball on fourth and two for a touchdown. That's how quickly things change. But it wasn't just that penalty. Deshaun Gibson had another face mask penalty on that drive as well. So the 49ers compounded mistakes on offense with with that were turnovers with penalties on defense. And Deshaun Gibson wasn't alone, but Ambry Thomas as well. We found Ambry Thomas again, making some mistakes in the double moves, coming up on receivers when there were people scrambling. And it's, it's okay to tighten up your coverage but he came up too hard, and then he had to hold as the player turned up field. On a play where Javon Hargrave ran all the way to the sideline with Lamar Jackson and batted the football down. But because Ambry Thomas held, they get a key first down and extended drive at the end of the half that ends up turning into a field goal. The 49ers defense compounded problems on offense with clutch, or the opposite of clutch, penalties. So you can see what I'm talking about. Now, with cause and effect, I want to talk about the offensive line because the offensive line is absolutely taking heat 
especially the right tackle, Colt McKivitz. And I'll say this, Colt McKivitz, he has up and down performances. That's the that's true. But if you watch the first half of this game, for the most part, Colt McKivitz played pretty well. And he's going against a pretty good defensive line and a good edge rusher in Jadavion Clowney. I think where he had the most of his problems was when the 49ers suffered multiple injuries along the offensive line, including all pro offensive tackle Trey Williams, and his backup, Jalen Moore, both going down with injuries. And they put Colt McKivitz on the left side. And they put Spencer Burford, the normal right guard, out at right tackle. And the reason was they had they had released Matt Pryor before the game. And they did it to make room for Willie Sneed because you had Jawan Jennings in protocol. The truth is, Jawan Jennings wasn't in protocol, in concussion protocol. The likelihood is Matt Pryor still would have been on the 49ers roster. Matt Pryor probably would have been available to play that game, and he probably would have been playing, you know, tackle spot instead of Spencer Burford. So it was a cause and effect kind of game. And let's just be honest. Let's say what it was. It was ugly at times. And yet, when we got to halftime, the 49ers were down four. As bad as they played in the first half, as many mistakes as they played, they got down four. When the wheels truly fell off was when the San Francisco 49ers had... The quick turnaround where the Ravens scored two touchdowns in like 18 seconds. That's when the wheels fell off. And it's unfortunate, but when you have turnovers on offense, you have key penalties, then you have young players making mistakes. That's what happened. Think about the safety. Just got 2-0 lead. Feeling good. They're about to kick you the ball. Ronnie Bell drops the ball out of bounds. What have we been talking about for a couple weeks now? Ronnie Bell just makes us nervous. The 49ers have a punt return issue right now with Ray Ray McLeod out. Ronnie Bell put that ball out of bounds. And most would think, well, at least it went out of bounds. Here's the problem. You should have had prime field position. Should have got the ball out past the 30-yard line at least. And if you look at when he caught the football or tried to catch the football, he could have got to the 30, 35-yard line. Field position difference is huge. But he didn't. He fumbled the ball out. That's a huge play in the game. That's the difference between getting to the end zone and potentially stalling out. So the 49ers have a young player there that's making some mistakes. Now, give credit to Ronnie Bell. The dude always plays hard. He gives everything he's got. I don't have any qualms with him as a player. I think he works really hard. But right now, he's not the answer at punt, at punt return. Did have a touchdown in the game from Sam Darnold. An absolute rocket, by the way. Uh, So bravo to those two guys for making a play at the end of the football game. But something needs to be done there. But he wasn't the only one. Jair Brown struggled a little bit. And we've seen this kind of rear its ugly head. It did against Philadelphia. right? A few plays where he jumps coverage, jumps routes, and then the play goes over the top. One of those touchdowns, Jair Brown, I mean, he flies up. Boom, smoked over the right, over, right over the top of him. And I think what drew my attention to that play was a sudden change. They got the football, right? It's the one where Trent Williams almost uh, strips it, depending on who you talk to, right? He got it or he didn't. But they have the prime field position. They're right there in the red zone. And the 49ers are out of position. And the 49ers are running two guys across the defense as the snap happens. And one of those guys is Demetrius Flanagan Fouls. A guy playing because Oren Burks is out. Some confusion on defense with backups and young players. And then Jair Brown jumps her out. Boom, over the top, touchdown. Next thing you know, you're struggling. So what you see is there's a cause and effect for everything. And the 49ers have done a really good job of masking some of those problems. Right? You're missing Eric Armstead, but you have guys who are stepping up like Javon Kinlaw, like Javon Kinlaw and others doing a really good job. You know, you have an injury to Oren Burks. Demetrius Flanagan fouls, struggling a little bit at times, but the other guy's picking him up and helping. And that sometimes you just can't mask those problems. Same goes for the offensive line. When you get down 18 points and you look up in the third quarter, and, you know, yeah, there was plenty of time in the game, but when you look up and you are down 18 points, that's going to change your game plan pretty significant. Because now you have to maximize the amount of possessions that you have. And I've heard a lot of people hypercritical of Kyle Shanahan about his game plan. 
And I will say this. I don't think the game plan was a bad game plan. Do I think there were some calls that Kyle Shadan would love to have back? Yes. Do I think Baltimore was just really good at times and took things away because they're a really good football team? Yes, I do. I mean, they made good reads. They understood what Kyle was trying to do on some plays, and they did a good job. So you always have to tip your cap when you see good football. And that's what we saw from the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this game could have been a lot closer. This game could have been a lot different if the 49ers don't make mistakes. With that, you have to give credit to the Ravens for just making some plays. There were some really good plays being made by the Ravens on offense and defense. Let's be honest. Lamar Jackson is really good. He can scramble around, and unlike other mobile quarterbacks the 49ers have faced this year, he can continue to make plays down the field. Heard about it all week. I put out a video about it. All eyes on Lamar. The understanding of where Lamar Jackson is going to be and the things that he can do are very significant. But when you get to that point in the game and you're down 30 to 12, you know you're going to have to throw the football. When that happens, you have no Trent Williams, and soon after, you have no Jalen Moore. You're in a situation where you've got a guy who hasn't played tackle in an NFL game in Spencer Burford, and Colt McKivitz, who's been your starting right tackle all year and hasn't played left tackle since 2021 consistently. You're going to have some problems because guess what Baltimore knows you're going to do. They know you're going to throw the football. You want to run the ball? Okay. They'll let you run the ball. They'll tackle you after six, seven, eight yards, and they'll just let that clock run because they have a three possession lead. That's exactly what the 49ers had to do was throw. And with that, it just makes it more difficult. It puts more pressure on the offensive line. And the truth is the 49ers are built from a position to run the football consistently and to move the pocket and throw the ball. Well, if you don't have the play action as part of the game and you can't run the football anymore, that's when the offensive line, the way, offensive line, the way it's built, is going to struggle. They're built on speed. They're built on athleticism. They're built on operating in space. They're not built on traditional pass sets, kick slides. They're not built on taking on pass rushers at a, that are elite consistently. And let's be honest, even if you're the best offensive tackle in the league, eventually they're going to get you with enough pass snaps. And I know a lot of people are like, well, just run the football. Well, you can't do that when you're down 18. Yes, you dug yourself a hole and you're trying to dig out of it. What you're hoping is that you're going to get a couple playmakers that pop a big play and create a situation where now it's a two-possession game. You get to a two-possession game, guess what? If it's middle of the third, you can reinstitute the run game. So it's one of those things where you have to make sure you're doing things the right way. So it's tough. Playing from behind is not good. And it was just a perfect storm for the 49ers. Number one, you're playing a really good football team. I want to I want to make sure that I say that because they're a really, really good football team. Defensively, they have a lot of fun playmakers, and they have guys who fly around and make plays. They're aggressive. They're big and physical along the defensive line, and they have a really good scheme. So first off, credit to them because without all of that, the 49ers still would have probably been able to overcome against some teams, even with the turnovers that they had. So bravo to the Baltimore Ravens in that case. And on offense to Lamar Jackson, right? Zay Flowers had himself a really good game. Isaiah likely looks like he's going to eventually be a star in this league. So bravo to them on that side of the ball. But you also just have to look at the situation that you're in. You just made too many mistakes. And we said this. I don't, I don't know if I said this on Patreon and some of my standalone shows there or if I said it you know, with others, but the 49ers beat themselves in this game, and I don't want to take away from the Ravens. I don't want to make it feel like that, but when you make mistakes like that in a big game like this, you don't even give yourself the opportunity to compete with the Baltimore Ravens because once you made that many mistakes and you fell into that hole, that quicksand, and you tried to dig yourself out, that's when you really got into some issues. And I could go through player by player and and really go into some of the things that you know guys were making mistakes on, including you know Ambry Thomas went back to it. And, hey, two minute drill, just giving too much space. Uh, you know, I talked about the holding call earlier where he had so much space that he ran up on it, and then when that guy broke, he had to hold. There, there's a lot of things that you can find like that. Jair Brown with some missed tackles in space. Jair Brown buzzing on some coverage and and getting flat footed again and getting getting beat over the top. You can definitely find those things. 
You could find, you know, situations where you should have had sacks and Lamar Jackson's able to get free. But the truth is, if the 49ers don't turn over the football five times, and, you know, a couple of those are just Baltimore Ravens making great plays, but you can't win a football game when you turn over the ball five times. The 49ers were plus 13 in turnover differential going into that game. They walked out minus five in that football game and minus eight, on, or I'm sorry, plus eight on the season. They've got to play a cleaner brand of football moving forward. It was the worst performance from the 49ers as far as the, uh, the things that they need to do as far as taking care of the football, turnovers, and limiting mistakes. The good news is when you look in the middle of all that, you find some really good play by the 49ers. George Kittle still had a great game. Brandon Ayuk had some big catches. Christian McCaffrey was making some great runs. The offensive line was blocking great in the run game. There in the end of the first half, that drive was special. The 49ers ran the ball down the Baltimore Ravens' throat. It was great. It was all, it was all 11 guys on offense working together. Great timely blocking from the offensive line. Tight end doing their job. Fullback. Debo Samuel blocking on the edge. Brandon Ayuk blocking on the edge. Christian McCaffrey navigating through those holes, making great reads, uh, being explosive, powering through a tackle at the goal line for a touchdown. You saw, I was like, oh man, that's... So it wasn't like the 49ers weren't executing at times. It was lapses where they made mistakes. So you could see it. And as a coach, when I'm watching film, those are the things I'm taking away. I'm like, hey, look at this great drive. This is what we could have done the entire time. And the thing was, Kyle came out passing in the first series, and he loosened up Baltimore, and he was able to go to the run. And then McCaffrey got going in the second drive, and they were able to run play action. It was all working the way that Kyle wanted, minus finishing, minus not making mistakes. So the good news is you can go into that coaching room, and you can point out you're going to go through in the film, and you're going to mark, hey, here's the mistakes. Here's what we did wrong. But you can also show a lot of clips of these are some really good plays. Brock, here's where you went first read. You hit George Kittle. It was a fantastic look. Great job. Here, here, here's this play. Uh, Aaron Banks, when you got to second level, and you pancaked the defender, and we got a big play by Christian McCaffrey. Look at Brandon Ayuk battling on the outside and pancaking Patrick Queen and showing the aggressiveness and style that we want to play on offense. So there was a lot to like. You're talking about a defense that gives up 287 yards, and some of this is going to be skewed. Uh, because it was some garbage time yards, I get that. But I said the four years were going to go over 400 yards in this game on offense, and they absolutely did. The 49ers have some good takeaways from this. The 49ers are not a bad football team. That game didn't reveal the 49ers to be anything other than still a really good team that made a lot of mistakes. And if you hear anyone that says, hey, they're a fraud, or they're not a great football team, or they can't win the Super Bowl now, those people don't understand football. Because you're going to have games like this. You're going to have a game like in 1994 when the 49ers went and lost to the Philadelphia Eagles. You're going to have games like in 1988 when Joe Montana threw four interceptions. You're going to have games where you just don't play your best. Hope is you limit those. And that when it comes to the biggest moments and the biggest times when you get into the playoff the Super Bowl, you play your absolute best. There's a lot to learn from this football game. There's a lot of adjustments the 49ers still can make. They do need to fix their punt return situation. Whether that is Ronnie Bell needs to figure it out or what Kyle Shadan said is, hey, we got some other options. Kyle Juszczyk is an option. Brandon Ayuk is an option. And one that absolutely shocked me, he said Christian McCaffrey is an option. Debo Samuel's already been handling the kick return duties. I think Christian McCaffrey handling punt duties would scare the living uh, daylights out of most 49er fans not wanting him to get hurt. I don't know how likely that is, but the 49ers got to figure out their return situation on punt for sure. And the 49ers just got to figure out how to make sure they don't make mistakes, whether it's penalties on defense or turnovers on offense. And if they do that, they are going to win every single game that they're in. That film did not show me, and this is the, maybe one of the biggest takeaways. That film did not show me a Ravens team that's better than the 49ers. What that showed me was a Ravens team that executed on that day better than the 49ers. 
And that's what the football game is about. It's X's and O's, it's chess, and it's about executing on the field. And the Ravens executed on Monday night, Christmas Day, better than the 49ers. That doesn't mean the next time they play, the Ravens will for sure beat the 49ers. Because if the 49ers execute better than the Ravens, the 49ers will win. What it did show, though, was these are two really, really good football teams with a lot of talent. The Ravens are no joke. The Ravens are one of the best, if not the best team in the AFC. And the 49ers know what it takes now to win the Super Bowl. You just got shown what you have to do. With all things, it's how you bounce back. Like Brandon Ayuk said, hey, we're on the other side of it this time. But I think we're going to bounce back. I think Brock Purdy is going to bounce back. And I think they are too. But did they make mistakes? Yes. Did they compound those mistakes with more mistakes while they were trying to get out of that hole? Yes. Are they things that are not fixable? No. Is it lack of talent? No. And you know what? Here comes Sebastian Joseph Day. He's going to help on the defensive line. 49ers aren't done with this season. And let's be honest, I still believe in the San Francisco 49ers. I hope you do too. Because the film definitely shows we got all the talent. We got all the scheme. Kyle didn't scheme it up bad. Now he understands what Baltimore did. It's great. And now you go out there and you got to take care of the commanders. And you got a short week. 49ers got a short week. Not a lot of time to prepare for an early morning game on the East Coast. So this is what you got to do in the biggest moments. And you need that number one seed. 49ers have two must-win games coming up. The only way they can win is is by winning these football games. Injuries are a big part of it, but that's not the reason the 49ers lost. It was cause and effect. Making mistakes, compounding those mistakes by making more, and then it ends up catching you in the end. So uh, are the 49ers a 13-14 you know, a, a, a point um, difference between them and the Ravens? No. But well, 49ers got to figure this thing out. This is the week to do it. They've got to go out there and they've got to absolutely play hard against the Washington Commanders and bounce back. Expect for Brock Purdy and this offense to bounce back. Expect the defense to play as good as they did in the first half. I thought they played really good in the first half. I thought Steve Wilkes did a great job. They just got put in some really bad situations. And hopefully those situations don't come up again. So uh, upon further review, the 49ers just compounded mistakes with more mistakes. And they've just got to make sure they get on their P's and Q's and make sure they execute at a high level. And if they do, the 49ers will be just fine heading into the playoffs. So did this expose the 49ers? No. What it showed the 49ers is, hey, no matter how great you are, if you don't play best, uh, your best against some really good teams, they're going to have good days, and they're going to win. And now the 49ers know what they have to do. It's better to have this game happen now than happen in the middle of January or in February. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the episode. Like and subscribe to the channel uh, if you haven't already. Um, if you're listening to audio platform, 40 yards cut back on believe. Appreciate it. These are just coaches, coaching points uh, you can take away. No negative thrown any way. I don't have any negative thoughts on any of these players. It's just, hey, sometimes you make mistakes. That's what happens. They'll respond from it. Uh, these guys are really good football players, and I expect the 40 yards uh, offensive defense to respond. And this episode was brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.